Dalen Terry is set to represent the Bulls at the draft lottery. A draft lottery that hopefully the Bulls can get some luck once again and maybe get a top four pick. We're going to talk about that. Plus, Patrick Beverly says that the Bulls would have been a top four team in the East had he been with the team the whole season. And we're going to predict Kobe White's next contract. We're going to do all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. If you want to follow me, you can do so right off the top at CEO Hayes at CEO H-A-I-Z-E. If you want to follow the podcast, you can do so at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform that we're on. But let's go ahead and get into the content today. So Dalen Terry is set to represent the Bulls at the draft lottery, and hopefully Dalen Terry brings some luck for the Bulls. The Bulls who uh, have a, what, 1.8 chance at the number one overall pick, an 8.3% chance at getting a top four pick. And if the Bulls get lucky and do get a top four pick, much less even the number one overall pick. But if they're able to get a top four pick in this draft, it would bring some luck to a franchise that just hasn't had much of it since last season when Lonzo Ball went down with his knee injury. And so, you know, let's hope. And, and you know, not to say that, you know, it, it really changes how much that we need to do and change with the team or the kind of the direct. Well, it will change the direction of the team, hopefully, if we get the right pick in, the to, in that top four area. But the Bulls, you know, considering how how – strapped for cash we are how, how much the, the 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 amount of space that we have between the luxury tax if we sign uh kobe and vooch you you really hope that the bulls can get lucky and even if they can't get lucky we've talked about before on this channel we actually have other videos on the channel but how the bulls can also still get in this draft and maybe get an influx of cheap talent and you know getting a a rookie that can contribute right away it, it benefits the bulls in a couple of different ways the rookie contracts are notoriously easy to manage, right? They're not too much. And so it, that would definitely help the Bulls go in that right direction um, as far as, you know, adding an influx of talent to this team that we need and avoiding the luxury tax, which we know is, uh, is you know, what ownership wants to do. Uh, overall, if the Bulls do get lucky, uh, we get lucky. And, you know, we'll be live for the draft here, so make sure you guys tune in. We'll also be live for the draft lottery, which goes down next Tuesday. So be tuned in for both those as we uh, hopefully, you know, send positive vibes and the Bulls can get lucky and get in that top four area. And, you know, if they do, that's when we'll start our draft coverage. I've really been delaying, you know, try, trying to talk about too many draft picks or prospects because the Bulls just, it, it's unlikely right now that the Bulls are going to have a draft pick. But best believe, if the Bulls do get lucky or they make a trade or something to get in that draft, we'll be talking about draft, draft coverage and we'll do like we did last season. We'll recover about 30, 31 draft prospects uh, last season in depth we'll have those draft profiles in there for you guys and hopefully let's hope that the bulls can get lucky man hey let me know what you guys think down below do you think that the bulls are going to get lucky and be able to get a top four pick and be able to hold on to their draft pick hopefully dale and terry brings that luck moving on into the next subject for today uh patrick beverly said on the pat bev pod that the bulls would have been a top four team in the eastern conference had he joined the team sooner now just looking at the role of uh, uh, Patrick Beverly uh, started 22 games for the Chicago Bulls. In that time, he averaged 5.8 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. But, you know, the offensive numbers aren't really, you know, what brings, you know, how much Pat Bev helped that team, specifically more so in the regular season. I had my issues in the in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, pro season play for the Chicago Bulls, that play in play. But, you know, overall, when he brought in that leadership, uh, the, the being able to communicate on offense and defense, just helping everybody kind of get more to their natural positions. You know, he said, you know, initially when he came in, he didn't want Zach Levine to pass. He just wanted Zach Levine to focus on scoring. And we saw Zach Levine have some of his best stretches of the season after Patrick Beverly came to the team. And so there's enough to look there. And I understand what Pat Bev is doing. The Bulls went 14-9 and uh, over his time since, since acquiring Pat Bev. And the thing is, like, here's the thing, right? Would I say that the Bulls would have been a top four team? I'm not going to necessarily say that. Just looking at some of our struggles this season, I do think we we definitely would not have been a playing team, though. I definitely think that we could have gotten uh, in, in, into the area to avoid uh, that playing tournament. But, you know, when you look at Pat Bev and the, and the impact that he had on the team, 
He came in. He was a leader at a time where the team needed leadership. Hell, the team still needs leadership now that he's gone and it doesn't seem like he's going to come back, especially if his contract demands of wanting that 13 to $15 million per year. Um, you know, if that, if that comes to fruition, I, it, you know, if he gets that, it's not going to be here in Chicago. But, you know, had the Bulls, and I, and I really do think in looking at this, whether right or wrong, no, it was, it was wrong. Let me be clear. No, it was wrong. Let me stop trying to be political. Uh, but it really did seem, and I really did get the feel that AK really thought that Lonzo Ball was going to be able to return this season. I think that there was some optimism around there. You can have your issues and saying, well, hell, like, look at what, what was going on. Uh, AK, you should have did something. But I hope that now that AK has that more clear, like, it's 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 highly unlikely that Lonzo Ball plays next season. If he does play or, or plays at all again in the Bulls uniform, just being realistic at the timeline for the return from that injury and how much time Lonzo Ball has left on his contract, it's highly unlikely. And if he does come back, I don't think he's going to be the Lonzo that we saw during that time period. And so, overall, like hopefully, AK now realizes how important having a point guard that can facilitate and lead uh, can be. And uh, unless you get leadership somewhere else. Um, on this team and so we need that and we need to kind of force everybody more into natural positions even Alex Caruso because we need to get focused on on getting him out of that power forward position as well but um so you know that's definitely uh, a thing and I understand why Pat Pat Bev is an overly confident person anyway right I don't expect Pat Bev to say anything less than what he said on this podcast saying that the Bulls could have been a top four team in the east he absolutely should feel that way I'm not going to take away from Pat Bev feeling that way because listen, Pat Bev, irrational confidence is the name of the game when it comes to Pat Bev, but you saw the results here, right? Yeah, you didn't see it in, in LA. He played a completely different role there, but you saw the results of it when he came to Chicago. He was the right person at the right time for the Chicago Bulls, and maybe the only person they could have got that could have brought that leadership. Russ wasn't coming here. I know some people show, uh, shout out to Pat, the designer that holds some optimism that the Bulls can go out and get Russ this offseason, but ultimately, when it comes down to it is that Pat Bev is going to say what he needs to say. He's going to, he's setting the table for his, uh, his free agent talks and the, and the conversations and the negotiation there. And so, uh, you know, being able to say, Hey, listen, you see what, you see how I got the bulls at the time, the little bit that I was there, you see, you see what I did there is a negotiation ploy. And so I don't know if Pat Bev is going to get the money uh, that he wants out in free agency. And if he does not get the money, could it make him pivot back to the Chicago bulls? A, a city where he's from, a, a, a place where he can come in and have and know exactly what his role is going to be. Uh, also, a player that understands and ran Billy Donovan's system better than any other point guard we or any other player we had at that position last season. So, you know, it has our own issues, especially when Pat Bev's shot isn't falling and things like that that brings to this offense. But, you know, while I, I do not, if I had to put a percentage on it, I'll put a 25% chance that Pat Bev's returns to the Chicago Bulls. But, hey, where do things have happened? Let's see. But let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think that the Chicago Bulls would have been a top five, four team in the Eastern Conference had we had Pat Bev all season? Let me know what you guys think on that one. All right, next topic up. Kobe White, right? So we've talked a lot over the last couple of days about Nikola Vucevic, either talking about Vuce replacements, talking about Vuce's contract, talking about other teams that could come in and try to sign away Nikola Vucevic. It's been focused a lot on Vuce. I want to pivot towards that and focus on our other bigger free agent that we have this offseason that's Kobe White he's a restricted free agent right now this season and if you look at you know what he could gain right what what he could sign for there's been talks like could it be somewhere between 16 million 19 million dollars when you look at around the league right players that are similar players to Kobe White that have similar skill sets at at similar ages it averages out to be around 11 million dollars um around what Kobe White's play. And, and so, and I know everybody's going to say, well, Kobe White has this upside, this, this, and this. Well, I'm just saying, average out with players that are similar age around Kobe's age um, and that have similar impact on their team, right? That doesn't mean that they can shoot the ball as well as Kobe, but they have similar impact with the overall, what they're able to do. Uh, Stephen Noah has, uh, no, has this uh, salary cap projection model, which it projects what players are probably going to get. And it has... Kobe White's projected annual value at $14.7 million. Now, the average market value for, for players around the same age as Kobe at similar positions is about $11 million, right? So right now, that would mean that if we're setting the low end, it's probably around $11 million. If we're setting the high end, it's probably around $14 million for Kobe White. Now, I would say this. 
either one of those contracts, I'm fine signing Kobe White at. The number of years is going to absolutely matter on that one as well. But I think when you've seen the growth that Kobe White has had this season and the fact that he's still only 23 years old, now, yeah, you start getting to that area where it's like, okay, how much realistically are you going to continue to improve? But let's keep in mind, too, Kobe White hasn't had a consistent role at any point in his NBA career. I think the closest that he had to a consistent role is last season and that, you know, that he was playing that, that reserve bench role. But even then, that changed over the course of the season. When you look at initially coming in, really kind of expected to be a scorer, whereas like Goran Dragic and other players were doing more of the ball handling. But as we saw Kobe play better, play more consistent, um, show that, that improved dribble, show that improved decision-making, more things started going through Kobe White last season. And so by the end of the season, I'd say probably about halfway through the season, that's when Kobe White's role really settled in, is that he was the primary ball handler on that bench. More things went through Kobe probably than even when he was a starter for us early in his career, and he performed well in that. That shot started to come um, along for Kobe as the season went on, and we just saw those improvements from Kobe White. Now, if Kobe signs more towards that higher end, that $14.7 million, and when you add in the same projected salary uh, tool for Nikola Vucevic, whereas the high end of his salary uh, projections is $18.2 million, when you factor that in, right, that means that the Bulls, if they also retain uh, Io DeSumo and Andre Drummond and Derrick Jones Jr. both re-sign as well, that leaves the Bulls at $7.7 million below the luxury tax, still having our mid-level exception. So, now, with that said, right, with that said, that paints a picture for the Chicago Bulls that it could be extremely difficult for the Bulls to add talent to this roster. Now, I have been very vocal. You guys know, I think that re-signing Nikola Vucevic and Kobe White are highly important to the Chicago Bulls. I think that it should be. I think that it's, you're not going, and one of the reasons why is that we can go over the salary cap, which are already over the cap, but below the tax. We can go over the salary cap to re-sign those guys. If you don't re-sign them or, or re-sign one of them, you're not going to get the same level of talent by just going out and getting a mid-level exception. So for the people that are saying, let Vooch walk or whatever, you're not going that, that you're actually hurting yourself and, and hurting your assets more by letting Nikola Vucevic walk. And so to bring it back to Kobe, Kobe White, you're not going to find many bench players, many role players at that level that are going to be able to perform the way that Kobe White performs. You're just not going to be able to do it. And so having Kobe White on that team, having him at that position and re-signing him, even if it is for that higher end $14.7 million as that base salary, you, you have to, you, 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 you're almost at the point where you have to do. You're not going to find the mix of youth, a player that you, that you know that you're familiar with, that Billy Donovan hopefully now knows how to use as well. You're not going to find that in the open market with the asset that the Chicago Bulls are going to be able to have if you let him walk, right? And so I do think that the Chicago Bulls are probably going to let the market set the value for Kobe White. When you really survey that the free agent market and the teams that are going to have available cap space to potentially sign Kobe White to a, uh, to a, a deal, right, um, an offer sheet, when you look at the teams that are, that are in that position to be able to do that, there's not a lot of them. And so if that market value is set for Kobe and you do get lucky and, you know, Kobe goes out and maybe talks to some teams and finds that, hey, let's sign on the lower end of that. Maybe that $11, $12 million area is what I'll get out in the open market. Then that, that, that increases what the Bulls are able to use in free agency. So um, and well, with their mid-level exception, biannual exception, they can use more than that. And that's because the Bulls have that artificial limit placed by ownership of not going into the luxury tax. Resigning Kobe White is important. And I think most Bulls fans have now woken up to that. You, you know, at the start of last season, uh, even the season prior to that, a lot of Bulls fans thought Kobe White was going to be a trade target, that he was going to be a trade chip, that the Bulls should just move him for power forward. And I think when, it all, when it's all said and done, Kobe White showed why you don't give up on players early. Kobe White showed why you do not allow yourself to just to, to not allow a player to really come out and see what a player gives you. You want to give a player that full rookie contract at least to see what they're going to do. Kobe White showed up in the season and showed the development that we've been wanting and hoping to see from Kobe White almost since he got here. And I hope that that's rewarded in a new contract. But again, keep in mind, re-signing Kobe, re-signing Nikola Vucevic, 
unless the Bulls do get that going on that trade market, it's going to be a tall test for the Chicago Bulls to really add high-level talent to this team. And this is why I've been preparing you guys. It, it's, it's more likely than not, we are probably going to run it back, maybe add one shooter or one big, and that may be it. Right now, the Bulls, if they re-sign Kobe, Vooch, Io DeSumo, Derrick Jones Jr., Andre Drummond opt-in, we are sitting close to the luxury tax with only 11 out of 15 roster spots. That's, that's, hey, that's an interesting place to be in, and that is why I do think that a deal may be coming for the Chicago Bulls if they really want to make a go at it and try to improve this team overall. But I've told you guys as well, there's a complete possibility that the Bulls, what they do is they end up just running everything back, letting the season come to its natural conclusion again. They have their own first-round pick in 2024, and then whatever, if the Bulls do, God forbid, they're a playing team again, Get out that playing tournament. At least at that point, we're in the luck, we're in the draft lottery, and we're not asking if we're going to be able to keep our pick. We will be able to keep our pick at that point in time. So you know the the decisions that are made around Kobe White, that are made around uh, 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 Nikola Vucevic, are going to be extremely important for whatever the Bulls' future ends up shaping up and being. And so, hey, I guess we'll see on that. I guess we'll see. I I, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Like. I wish I had a more clear path. This is probably the most cloudy offseason for the Chicago Bulls in a while because of just where we sit with assets. Um, but, yeah, hey, that, that's it. That's my thoughts on that. You guys can let me know down below. Do you think that 11 to $14.7 million? So let's just say 11 to $15 million, is that a fair range for Kobe White? Or do you think the Bulls are going to end up having to pay more than that in negotiations with the way that he stepped up last season. Let me know what you guys think on that down below. Also, before we go, I do want to acknowledge that DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine both did receive a couple of third-place uh, All-NBA team votes. And to that, hats off to them. I think that Zach Levine especially, had he played how he played from December on the whole season, he would have absolutely been second-team All-NBA at the minimum. And DeMar DeRozan didn't quite have the impact that he had last season, but I think also him getting those votes and also him having the hip injury for the most part of the season that he played with. Kind of makes sense. I hope that we are talking about Zach Levine being all team, uh, all, on an all-NBA team next season. Uh, he definitely has that potential in him, and we'll see the way that it shakes out. That's my time. That's it for today. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chicago Bull Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, for our mailbag episodes, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Media. Media.